the Romance Class Intro Session and Q&A uh, here on Twitch uh, with me, Mila Villas-Gerag. I'm an author and publisher and founder of Romance Class. Um, so thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for um, uh, visiting this channel and uh, watching the stream. So what will happen uh, right now is that I will do a quick introduction to romance class, the kind that I do uh, when we run uh, this online class, uh, this class and community. And hello, hi friends, <laughs> hi friends visiting Twitch. Um, so I will do a quick intro to romance class. I will talk about the community. I will talk about how we write the books. And then I will do a Q and A. Uh, we got some questions about uh, romance class, about writing, about publishing. I will answer those. And if you're here and then you uh, put a question into the comments, I actually might uh, be able to answer. What will happen though is after uh, 24 hours, the intro session part of this video will not be on our channels. Uh, I'm going to keep the Q&A up though, but the intro session itself uh, will be online for a day only. So if you're here, it's time to ask the questions and thank you so much. Hello to the people here. <laughs> Hello to the first timer. And that's it. Uh, so I will answer. So that was like super quick. Um, listing of everything that romance class does and how to write a romance class book as if no, as if that's it <laughs> as if as if I just shared that slide and then it's done uh, and I can answer questions now and I think I got some that I can uh, answer okay so I'm gonna answer a few that I got on Wattpad I also posted a call for questions uh, so here's a question. How to make a proper resolution after a really heavy conflict? Um, I, okay, this is a weird question to ask me. Um, it, it's a perfectly fine question to ask any other writer, but the thing with me is I don't jump into a thing that I don't know, uh, if I don't know where I'm gonna land. Uh, that's just how it is. Um, so I actually only write in conflict that I know how to resolve. So that's one way to avoid this problem. It's, uh, it's to think of the solution with your problem and, uh, and not just start a problem <laughs> without knowing how to resolve it. <laughs> right? Uh, but if you are already the writer who has introduced a conflict and you don't know how to solve it, I think you have to run with it. So you have to sort of think about the logical steps, like this happened and then what happens next and then what happens next and what happens next. And you actually kind of have to push yourself because I think what, what scares us and makes us think that we um, like overdid it or or we're out of our league is that we are sort of we hit a point where we don't know what happens next because it's sort of that crazy or that um, or that out there outlandish or that beyond our experience that now we don't know what happens next. So you kind of have to push yourself to see what happens next. What does happen next after this? And if you commit to it, you kind of shouldn't go back. <laughs> you you should o press forward and open that door, even if you're not sure what's on the other side, because that's that's the road you took. <laughs> and that's yeah, logical. Okay, from editor Leila who's got logical step for the personality of the character. That's totally right. What's the next step? And not for you necessarily as the author. What's the next step? what's the next step that the character would actually make? See? How awesome. I love I love people in the comments answering <laughs> questions. Yes. Okay. Next 
question? Also from what side, I think. Could you talk more about the language choices you make in your books and the decision as Filipino author to write in English? Um, Okay, so it was interesting because I got this question on Wattpad where Tagalog and Taglish romance and fiction is really, really popular. It's exceedingly popular and more popular than if you were writing in English, at least when you're talking about the Filipino audience. Um, but I write in English. So, okay, my decision on my language choices um, is I used to say that I wrote in English and I write my books in English because it's my first language and that's what I know to speak well and write well. But I've actually revised that. Um, I I feel that it is entirely possible to write if you're bilingual, if you if you speak Filipino and English, it is totally possible to write in both. You just need to practice more. So. Uh, I, I, I've i kind of given up the idea that I will never be able to write in Filipino. I just, it's it's just a thing where my voice, my author voice in Filipino is totally different. And I didn't spend my time practicing it. <laughs> so I am not confident in it. And that's why I don't uh, write that much in it. What So it is a decision I made based on... Uh, what I'm comfortable using and what I feel I can do justice to, but that doesn't mean that you can't do better and you can't improve, especially based on your goals. So if your goals are really to be read more in the Philippines and to be read uh, by people who like reading Taglish, then that's definitely the language you should work on and write um, and write in. And I happen to be writing in English which means um, it's a totally different set of readers sometimes. Uh, there is some intersection, but not a lot. So you make those choices. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Okay, those are, I think, the ones from Wattpad. So I can answer any other questions here on Twitch. Please, uh, please send questions. Hmm, let me reflect on this. After the allies are not jerks part earlier, Leila said, not nice guy. Can you explain the difference for the benefit of readers who might confuse them for the same type of character? Okay, so um, if you're with Romance Class and you've been attending um, our events and lectures and stuff where I tweet about things or talk about things, we have actually distinguished uh good guys from nice guys nice guys <laughs> there is a term now for a uh, nice guy syndrome so you can look it up um it doesn't have the best connotation it is it it now describes a kind of character who who um acts a certain way because they expect they expect, uh, they act a certain way towards someone they're romantically interested in because they want the reward of, um, of like, see, I did this for you. It's quite transactional. It's quite, they, they like to position themselves opposite uh, somebody, um, somebody who, who the main character actually probably likes. And they like to position themselves as the opposite, as I'm nicer. Uh, what what the distinction that we make is that um, a really good person supports you. <laughs> a really good person will not uh, will not judge the main character for her choices and will support her or him. Uh, positioning themselves as nice. While at the same time, sort of not being uh, the right support uh, for the person, for the character, that's not. Uh, that is quite toxic depending on the story. And we are now able to recognize it in books. We're now able to recognize when someone is being nice because, of it, because they're expecting uh, a romantic like transaction in return. Okay. 
I hope that answered it. <laughs> Next question. From Jay. When you started romance class, did you imagine it to be how it is today? Not at all. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think the best thing that we hoped for was that people would write more books. And then it was harder when we started. And everyone who was there knows that it was hard to get people interested in books that did not have an online following. Um, it was hard to get publishers interested in a totally new author who wasn't already like social media famous. That was the kind of uh, environment that we started in. Uh, we were asking people to write the kind of story or the kind of romance story that they wanted to have read when they were when they started reading. And then when they finished their books and were able to publish them, uh, the landscape of publishing had changed and became more about uh, more about your following and your numbers and your stats than the story itself. And so we had to, we had to sort of form, reform a community that provided what we thought publishing was going to provide for us. So it feels like it, it uh, so now I did not imagine <laughs> that we would have to do that. It sort of feels like we could have uh, we could have given up at any time. We could have stopped, and everyone would have just written that one book and then <laughs> moved on, because that's what because uh, that's what happens to a lot of people. We uh, a lot of people, especially here in the Philippines, if you started reading chick lit or romance uh, the same time I did, a lot of these authors that we enjoyed reading and loved, they wrote one or two books and then moved on. <laughs> uh, and that was totally like a regular, normal thing to do. And yeah, so I did not imagine that we would have to create this environment where we would actually like form all of these things ourselves. But now that we have, I'm super happy. <laughs> and super proud and and I like telling people that it's possible so if there's one thing that's why I ended my presentation earlier with the way that all com communities should function because sometimes I give a talk to a group of writers and none of them are interested in romance but I feel that what uh, whatever it is that you're writing and if you're in a group this is what you should be doing with and for each other so that you can sustain whatever it is that you start in. Thank you for that question. <laughs> Next, what has been the biggest change in the community since you started it? Wow. Um, uh, wow. Uh, I think when we started it, we really were just authors and readers. And then the big change, was recognizing that everyone who has been helping us out is part of the community. And I wasn't sure before if they felt, I wasn't sure before if that was even necessary to say uh, because, because we work with artists and we pay them. <laughs> and then, or we work with an actor and then and then they perform and then we don't see them again after a while. But actually they have given us so much and they have they have influenced the way we write, they have influenced the way that we um the way that we just engage with the work. And it, they've given us so much energy that uh, they've given like the group so much energy that it felt wrong to not acknowledge that they're part of it. Yeah. <laughs> So apparently we have, yeah, we have, it's, it's funny how a writing community would have or would count among, among us, uh, like actors, artists, um, our printer, <laughs> our, everyone, everyone who helps. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next. For the benefit of people who are thinking of having their books published, what are the advantages of going in the, in the community versus trad funding? Um, advantages, okay. So 
in the uh, personally I self publish all of my books this is not <laughs> this is not uh, a requirement if you're in romance class they there are romance class authors who publish indie sometimes and publish trad sometimes we have done work with trad publishers in the Philippines um, but the main thing yes I've seen the keyword in the comments it's control so the main advantage is control the main appeal for me is control over um, over every single decision regarding the book but that's also the scariest thing so if you're not into that if you prefer somebody else making the decisions for you definitely um, or if it's your first time and you want you don't want you, like you want the experience of having someone else guide you uh, if it's your first time that's totally natural I feel um, and that's fine uh, we you can do that and we will still support you and uh, we have uh, romance class authors who have books coming out uh, by trad pub and we are full support for those books as well uh, what it is though is um, you will feel the difference uh, in terms of control and in terms of reach so uh, it depends on how you publish and what you've published uh, but you might feel, for example, with Tradpub that you've just, uh, you're just reaching a lot more people than you thought possible. And, but at the same time, um, if you're publishing indie, you actually know who you're reaching out to and you're able to target. Um, you're able to target like the right kind of people or the people who really uh, are the ones who would appreciate this kind of book. So um, I, I self-publish. <laughs> Uh, because I like control. Next. From Zella, how did having the first slide reading affect have you written romance class books? Um, okay, that was so cool. So we had our first slide reading. Um, as some of you know, with Rachel Coates and Gio Bahal, uh, we had it in a small, small room, small group, a limited audience. And it's it really changed the way that I imagined uh, like it it made me realize that I had to be more aware of how my words go out into the world um, because sometimes you have sometimes you have an intention when you write and it's not just a simple thing or a technical thing as word choice sometimes um, this scene uh, was what you imagine one scene differently in your head and then when when it is and when it is brought to life by people who are not you and they're engaging with it as words and they were not consulting you on the interpretation <laughs> And then you see how they interpreted it. Then you realize that, okay, um, maybe you have to, maybe, maybe, like, oh, that was more fun than I, than I thought it would be, or, oh, that's really interesting. But, like, the main thing for me was, uh, like, the, the silliest thing, I think, was uh, I liked the confirmation that my male dialogue sounded okay <laughs> that was <laughs> oh hi hi doc and Zelly. yes <laughs> that moment <laughs> yeah but something like that okay um but for me for me it was just like completely complete <laughs> And then yes, hard to pronounce words like do we really need them? Do we really need should could it have been something else? Yeah. But I think for me, like the first one, the first one was really like do do does my male dialogue sound okay? And um I don't know if we're just 
we just lucked out with such great actors who were able to sell it. But it works. It works. And then when it kind of doesn't work or when, when in rehearsal they trip over a line, I know that we have to fix something or I have to fix something in my writing. Because sometimes it's a habit that you can fix. That's true. Scenes that didn't seem to leak when you wrote it or it was just a simple thing and then suddenly when interpreted by two people in front of you, suddenly have all the feelings. That's right. Next question. Do we have more questions? I'm sort of sad that I'm missing all of the comments, like a lot of the comments. <laughs> I want to I wanna jump into your conversation. But yeah, so now people in the comments are reminiscing about scenes that when interpreted and performed live seem to have totally run away from <laughs> The author's original intention. Yeah. And then, of course, there's that moment, as mentioned by, uh, by Chi, where one actor just said hi, literally just said hi. <laughs> and the entire room had a reaction. So I don't even know, I don't even know how to explain that. It's one word. <laughs> Next question. Oh my gosh. Where do you see romance class in five years? Um, more of everything. Actually, I, I, what I want is that uh, apart from more authors working on their books, that we actually see a lot more. We're able to give an author a lot more um, from doing this with us. Uh, I love... <laughs> this universe <laughs> i love for example that we are able to create experiences where the author really feels that their work is appreciated um i i would like to be able to in not five years but sooner give the authors more tangible experiences that uh that make you feel that it was worth it it was worth taking that work and putting it on the page and uh but we're all working together on this i'm constant i know that it's not just me i know that um i'm i'm working with everybody here and we're sort of finding what me what and i feel that that's what works uh finding what uh finding what we enjoy and what makes this good for us and what makes um what what makes us killing and what um, makes us feel accomplished. So yeah, let's keep doing that. Yes, mahirap yung talong. <laughs> Pero totoo, I really want, I really want us to get more, uh, to to feel more accomplished, and to to feel uh, to feel more accomplished to really get the kind of um recognition that these that these books deserve and that. Uh, authors really get everything. You deserve it. <laughs> okay. Maybe one last question. So yeah, so there's a note um, and there's a note here that and a reminder that this whole video would be will be on Twitch for just 24 hours. Just the Q&A portion will remain up. Um, I wanted to sort of run the intro session by this group, uh, but because it's totally new and I don't want it to be, uh, I, want, I want it to be um, available, but, but we can work on it another time. Okay, last question. For people who would like to do more academic studies on romance class, what things could be explored more? I would love, and there's another question. Oh, hi. So two, two more questions. I would love, um, I would love that people explore um, how we, I, I would love for people to explore what's missing. So if someone were to look at the entire catalog of romance class and say that we've missed something, I want um, the studies to, to tell us that. I want, 
um, I want also people to be able to look into how maybe uh, the way that we've depicted um, the groups that we claim to represent, women, um, um, all these sectors, all these people who who um, form like our cast of characters, <laughs> if we have done justice to to the issues that they um, that they represent, I also would like that we like the way that we've written our books. I feel uh, the way that we've defined the romance hero, the way that we've defined the romance main character. Like if that can be studied, if that can be looked at, if we have helped, uh, if we have made any impact at all, based on how uh, we have we have uh, set set our guidelines. So it's that it's really that it's impact. Like we ha we critique each other's work so much. Um, how we it ends up with books that we enjoy, but what's the impact of that outside of this group? If anything, um, yeah, Jella, we I can uh, Jella suggestion. I actually we're actually tracking that now. Yes, <laughs> a question from Charlie. Charlie, hi Mina. I was part of the first romance class. Yes. What would you advise to someone who wants to get back to writing after years of hiatus? Start. Start slow and small. Short story is fine. Um, quick, a quick chapter is fine. A scene is fine. Um, I remember what you wrote. I think you, uh, we that was part of uh, that was part of the live reading of the first April Fields Day. I think you still have a lot to to contribute in terms of um in terms of uh, your experience. Uh, all my <laughs> You need to know this too. Well, the thing is, we're still we're all still here. We still enjoy, uh, we still enjoy the books that you've released and the story that you released. Um, it's understandable that life is a lot right now. Um, yes, that one. Um, and I think I think it's okay to not pressure yourself if it's, if it's really not happening. But if you want a deadline if you want a milestone to reach or if you want like something to um there's always there's always uh yes pinterest boards count as writing <laughs> um like quick uh quick flash fiction something on twitter something on your blog um something on something in private on your notes um in your phone uh it all adds up and yeah <laughs> i'm so sorry if there, if there's a lot of people feeling this <laughs> but we're here okay don't worry oh my gosh don't worry but uh yes just recognizing though i would like to acknowledge that there are still a lot of stories that people are looking for that feeling go you are in a great position to be able to tell and when you're ready just let yourself tell it i hope that's not enough i hope that's not pressure but we really we really are looking forward to this okay okay yeah so all these suggestions um I don't know if you want like to start a small group. I don't know. I don't know how much accountability you want. I'm not gonna pressure you. It's really a, it's really a, a weird time right now. So, you're welcome. You're welcome. We're looking forward to, we're like we're looking forward to everything. Oh, and you know we we're doing web series now, which is like dialogue format, script format, which some find easier, right? <laughs> Maybe that can be something that you can work with too. Yes, kahit in private. Okay. Yes, if there's something that you can do with a friend or but for me because I don't I don't write with a friend. Um 
it's not my thing. <laughs> okay, last question na talaga. I like this one. We've had live readings in a web series. What's next for romance class? Um, I did I did acquire um I did ask a bunch of authors earlier this year to sign media rights adaptation, uh, media adaptation rights to me and to another firm based in LA. So we're working on that a lot. A lot. So um crossing our fingers. But also we're working on that a lot, but at the same time the Uh, yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for all the questions. Um, this video will be up uh, for 24 hours. And the Q&A will be video on demand for longer. Um, I'm going to try to put a rather uh, more updated edition. So don't worry about that. Uh, we'll have it up soon. Uh, but thank you for listening tonight and running this by uh, and and letting me run this by you because we really are trying to change things and make it better all of us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye, friends. And the people.